Aloha, everyone, and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. This show is uh, sponsored by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. We have a great show for you today. Fantastic technology coming out of the University of Hawaii uh, by our up-and-coming young engineering students mm -hmm. who've uh, really uh, invented a, a fascinating machine to help uh, people who are uh, challenged in walking in wheelchairs. This is like the end all and be all of uh, wheelchair assistance. So I'm really pleased to have Austin Yoshino. Who hello. Is the, say hello. He's the inventor, uh, founder, and CEO of this mm -hmm. startup company. And uh, Jillian uh, Kuba, who is the medical lead, who assists uh, mm -hmm. in uh, supporting the medical aspects of this uh, invention. Mm -hmm. So first of all, um, give us a little bit of your background, uh, Austin. Where, where are you from? And so I graduated kind of an from Maya High School. I'm a fourth year mechanical engineering student for the yeah. University of Hawaii. Right. OK. Mm -hmm. And when are you going to graduate? So I'm expected to graduate in the fall of 2019. OK. And so from there, I'm, gonna, I'm using this time to gauge the potential of this company. And if I have something to start off with, then this is what I'll do my future endeavors in. Awesome. And Jillian, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I grew up here. Um, I'm a third year. Mm -hmm medical student at UH Manoa and I joined the team because I really believe in what he's doing with this engineering aspect of mm -hmm. helping kids with cerebral palsy I think that's awesome awesome that's really great um, so the title of this is it's called the gate trainer and before we get going I just want Jillian to tell us <laughs> because she's the medical side of the team, that's what do right. we mean by gate? It's not like a, a gate gate, it's something else, right? Right, mm -hmm. so it's gate, G-A-I-T, and what that basically means, your kind of movement, walking. Um, so the gate trainer is designed to help people with their walking, their gait. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and it's gyroscopically controlled so you don't just fall over, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. So um, Austin produced a really great video it's about three minutes, and uh, I'd like uh, us to run that now so it tells a really good overview of what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we'll get into some more of the detail with, with a set of uh, slides. It's not death by PowerPoint. <laughs> so if we could uh, start the video now, that'd be great. Good evening. I am Austin Yoshino, a fourth year engineering student. This is my invention. Okay. Here's my little brother, Grant. He loves to be around family and friends and where all the action is. He also has a diagnosis of cerebral palsy, a condition that can make this difficult. Grant relies on a medical equipment called a gait trainer. While a gait trainer is meant to improve walking ability, the amount of practice time ranges from 5 to 45 minutes and is limited by discomfort. This is a sketch of my proposed device, the G-Trainer. My goal is to acquire a strategic partnership with an existing gait trainer manufacturing company after I develop a working prototype. I'd like to thank everyone who supported me along this journey. I'm hoping that you will support my goal in business of helping others. Hey, what's up? I am Austin Yoshino, Brant's older brother, the founder and CEO of G Trainer LLC. My name is Ever Domison, and I'm the CEO of G Trainer LLC. According to cerebralpalsy.org, there are currently 760,000 individuals with cerebral palsy. About half of those people require a gait trainer to walk. So as you can see in this design, it follows a very wide base, which makes it impractical when using in the house or going through school or going through grocery stores. These support the underarms with the supports to growing, which are very uncomfortable positions to be in for a long extended period of time. Current gait trainers resemble a four-wheeled car. What we're aiming to do is to take that and turn it into a motorcycle. So the way it works is there will be two wheels in tandem. Each wheel will have an inner spinning disc. As this disc spins, it creates toppling resistant forces, which helps the wheel to self-stabilize. This will eliminate previous physical barriers to participating in life activities such as household chores, socializing in school, and playing sports. We are entering our company into another business competition through the University of Hawaii okay. in order to obtain funding for a full-scale prototype and manufacturing costs. G-Trainer really has a wide range of applications and we're only scratching the surface. My grandpa passed away after suffering a stroke and he spent almost nine months in a rehabilitation center learning to walk again. With a product like G-Trainer, he could have done that in the comfort of his own home with a lot more freedom. This company is dedicated to my little brother, Brad. His growth into maturing into a fine young man has not been without struggles. As an engineering student, I've taken it upon myself to improve the lives of him and others with similar needs. Follow our journey on social media and check out our website to learn more about our product. 
If you are interested in helping us make a difference in aiding those with disabilities, please contact me on my email or go through our website. The first place winner taking home $2,000 is G Trainer. Uh, and uh, really told a great story of uh, mm -hmm. starting from why why uh, we're, we're building this uh, this uh, device or why you invented this device and um, right now I understand that you're trying to uh, raise some money for this correct um, how are you doing that so we started our crowdfunding campaign through GoFundMe and so we're looking at a goal of five thousand dollars which will help us get to the point where we can pitch this product to a manufacturing company. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I understand you're using some high-tech technology to build your first prototype. And mm -hmm. what is that? How does that work? So right now we're making a small-scale prototype using a 3D printer and right. just, you know, uh, city mill parts. And so we're constructing this prototype to ha have a working device that we can pitch to a company. So about how big is that? Like. So the working prototype will be about this big. Okay. Yeah. And how high? Uh, approximately this high. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have like a model on it, like a model of a person sitting in a yeah, chair yeah. and all that? Yeah. So they yeah. can really get, understand the concept? Because mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. that easy a concept to understand. When, when you look at the drawings and there's a gyroscope, which mm -hmm. automatically mm -hmm. is like weird, <laughs> like magic, kind of right. a magic technology. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's have uh, the first slide up, please. And here we go. So here's your brother. Yes, my uh, little brother. Brant. Brand. Okay, mm -hmm. so I know the video covered some of the issues with the existing technology, but mm -hmm. could you go into it a little bit in more depth of what, you know, how uncomfortable this is so for Brant? Current gate trainers are just very large in nature, mm -hmm. and that's because it, it needs the extra material to support weight distribution, otherwise the person will tip over. Right. And so while it may help him walk and he can walk in it, the Places he can use it are very limited. Right. For example, you know, he can't really use it in the house because we don't have a lot of space. You can't really use it in grocery stores or even during school grounds, it's a little hard with everyone walking by. Um, also, if you look at how he's being holstered up in this device, he's being upheld in the underarm and groin areas, which are not very comfortable places. And so for our design, we're, the gyroscopic technology helps to self-stabilize the wheels, which, which can allow us to reduce the frame size. And we chose a vest style harness so that it would be supported, his pressure will be supported throughout the body instead of just in these three points. So, how, how would he actually, we would somebody still have to pick him up? And, yes, yes. And put yes. him in? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you have to almost be like Steve Reeves. I mean, he's going to be a heavy guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, thankful for, thankfully for my family, my dad is really yeah, carried the load for that. But we are looking at uh, getting lifts. And so, there are mm -hmm. lifts out there that can help transport him to, from the bed to the walker to the wheelchair okay. to the dinner table. Okay. So Jillian, I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you uh, <laughs> comment a little bit about on the health side, why, what, you know, why it's so good for people to, to walk? Um, yeah, so especially for cerebral palsy, which is a movement disorder, um, usually children get this at birth or um, in their prenatal stages, so mm -hmm. when they're in the womb um, or shortly after they're born. And so what it causes is um, muscle atrophy, muscle tension, uh, muscle tone. It's called spasticity, where your mm -hmm. muscle um, tissue actually shortens. Okay. And that is that can be very painful, very limiting for the children. And of course, people with cerebral mm -hmm. palsy, they, um, they range in their motor functions. Um, it varies from person to person, but um, it's really important for them to get walking in just so that they can maintain their muscle length and um, their mobility and their uh, range of motion too. Right. Um, and also it's just great for the children in the sense of like their socialization, being able to go outside, go out mm -hmm. to places with their family. Um, it kind of gives them a sense of more independence as well, right. which can be really even more important than you know the medical, physical right. aspects. So how many times a day would they exercise? Is it like a one day, a one day, one time a, a day event, or can you do you space it out over the course of a day? Um, I think that that really depends on the child, just because each child's situation is kind of can vary mm -hmm. greatly yeah. from okay. person to person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, pull up the next slide, please. 
So, um, Austin, tell us about mm -hmm. these other kludge So these are here. current uh, gate trainers on the market. Yeah. Um, as I was saying before, they all follow a very similar design. The, as you can see, the bases are all uh, very wide. Um, the most popular one is probably the Riften. Uh, that, that would be the biggest company, but even that design is a little on the bulkier side. Right. Mm -hmm. And so how would yours reduce the bulkiness? I mean, would you still have those outrigger wheels, or would no, it just be no, this no. little magical wheel that just stays <laughs> up? Right? That... So it would be two wheels in tandem, yeah. and it'd be, it would, they would be walking as they straddle the device. Right. And so it, it would be as wide as their feet. Or oh, their, really? Their I think we have hands. a diagram of that. So mm -hmm. next, next slide, please. Uh, oh, we'll talk about how many people are afflicted with this. You want to talk about the market? I mean, I don't want to call it the market size. That sounds a bit cold. Yeah. But, you know, these are human beings. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about, you know. Um, well, actually, cerebral palsy is the most common um, disability among children, motor right. disability among um, children. And so around 800,000 kids in the U.S. alone um, are diagnosed with cerebral palsy, and then so that's maybe like one in 323 children in the world, according oh, to the really? CDC. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. I'm surprised that the percentage is. It's like, a lot bigger than people yeah. are aware of. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So part of this project too is also um, being able to raise awareness for cerebral palsy and mm -hmm. conditions mm -hmm. like it, those movement disorders as yeah. well. So it's hard on the families too. I mean, oh, yes, for sure. Tell, tell us about some of the issues. You know, being a family member, you know, that impact you guys. Um. Well. Generally. Hmm. Generally, I mean, there is just struggles with mobility. You know, yeah. um, getting our brother into the car, out of the car, into his devices. It puts right. a lot of strain, not just on him, but on us. Right. Um. And so this device, I'm hoping, will help to eliminate some of these barriers. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have the next slide, please. Okay, I think this is showing existing technology. Right, yes. It's yes. pretty agricultural, I would call it. It's not like, <laughs> it's not like very high tech at all. Yeah, it's, it's very mechanical. In, in a world where we have electric wheelchairs, and almost everything is electric now. You know, yeah. It's weird that no one had... I can't, that for this, I can't right. believe somebody hadn't thought of this. Yeah. <laughs> so why did you think of the gyro? Is that because you see the uh, you know the guys going up and down Diamond Head? And what do they call those uh, two wheeled things? Y you're that's right. That, that's, that's exactly where it is. It was. Uh, no. I was thinking about these those hoverboards that just came popular all of a sudden. Yeah. Oh. And so I was thinking, you know, that has to have some sort of stabilizing technology in it because when I wrote it for the first time, I, I got it. You know, it was right. pretty easy. It was it wasn't too hard. And I thought, why not combine that with the walker. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when was your Eureka moment? Did you have one? Yes, yes. Tell us about that. Huh. So I was thinking of, I've been, uh, a couple years ago I started thinking of, you know, my knowledge as an engineering student and how I could help out my little brother, you know, right. something I've always wanted to my whole life. And I guess one night I was just cruising with my, one of my homies and I just thought of it, you know, it was, it was just a random thought. I was thinking, I was, we, j we had just finished playing with the little hoverboard, and so I was thinking, like, you know, just, just fresh off of that, you know, combining that with a walker, and I thought, you know, maybe this might work. So I wrote down on my phone. The next morning, I, I like, like, looked at it, and I started doing some research on the internet, yeah. and I found out that they had used a gyroscopic wheel to replace training was on a bike. Right. And so that company had funded a lot of money through Kickstarter. Unfortunately, they crashed and burned, like, in 2013 or whatever. But, you know, I thought that if that technology works for... For replacing that, you know, why can't I use why can't I use it for this too? Awesome. Well, we're going to uh, cut to a break. Believe it okay. or not, we've already gone through about fifteen minutes. I oh, told wow. you we'd go fast. fast. Yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, cut to the break, mm -hmm. and we'll be back in about a minute. Okay. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you. Aloha. I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show, and it's streamed live on ThinkTech at two p.m every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. 
on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Okay, here we are, back from our short break, mm -hmm. and I have Austin and Jillian here. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Austin's awesome invention at the University of Hawaii. I always like to pitch that uh, the University of Hawaii is doing things that solves uh, people's problems today and not mm -hmm. like 25 years from now. So well done, Austin, for Thank you. <laughs> getting out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to uh, you know, show off the university and that mm -hmm. we're doing things that uh, the local community who supports mm -hmm. the university are mm -hmm. going to get some benefit out of it. So mm -hmm. especially you know, the impact on the families. It's not just the actual person who's mm -hmm. in the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, has, the, has a cerebral palsy. It's mm -hmm. like the whole family Mm -hmm. is affected by this mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. like the multiplier effect is like what depending on your family size could be five six mm -hmm. eight mm -hmm. people by mm -hmm. you know one person so this is awesome mm -hmm. that you're doing this so let's get the next slide up please so let's just we'll work our way through these slides and you can describe this technology which is like i said super cool so okay talk about gyroscopes and so gyroscopic technology is, uh, or in the wheel anyway, is going to be an inner spinning disc. And so as this inner disc spins, it creates uh, resistant toppling forces. And so to help keep this wheel upright, which will attach to the frame, help keep the frame upright. Okay. And so the easiest way to conceptualize it is it's very similar to a toy top works. As you spin this toy top, the faster you spin it, the harder it is for it to come off balance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you spin the wheel? Do you have an electric motor yes, in, yes. In, integrated in this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And where do you get the power for that? So the power will be hooked up to a battery. Okay. Mm -hmm. And about how long does a battery last? So we, have to, we are going to figure that out when we upscale the model to be real life size. Okay. But the goal is to make it last for at the very least an hour. Okay, that's pretty cool. So I'll have to talk to you about hydrogen after the show. We, yeah. We can <laughs> increase that by maybe a factor of three or four. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get my hydrogen plug in. So next slide, please. Okay, cool. go for it. So what these are, are some saying? of the current applications of this technology. Um, as I was saying before, in the gyroscopic bike, this uh, front wheel is used to replace training wheels. So when you first learn how to ride a bike, you don't need training wheels, because this will help keep you upright. Um, in the solo wheel, which is something you may see people riding around in the streets nowadays, it's used to help keep someone on the wheel. You know? And so in a, in a conceptual car, it's, it's used in a very similar way, too. So if somebody accidentally leans over, I mean, how much force can it actually keep somebody from falling over? Is there enough force in this thing to keep a person upright? So in terms of the engineering, when we make the small scale prototype, we will test the forces. Yeah. But before we put something on the market, obviously, it'll, we were going to run some sort of analysis on it to make sure that there is no possible way in any, in the worst case scenario, they will fall over. Because that, okay. that's our number one priority is making, the, making sure the person in this device is safe. So you're going to be making these in different sizes. I mean, there's big people and small people. Yes, yes. Yeah. So our goal is uh, for children, just because in their um, growing up or in their adolescent stage, they want you want to get them familiar with this device as much as possible. Because sure. if, if they don't have access to this when they're an adult, it's too late. They won't be they won't be able to build the motor functions to walk. Oh, no kidding! Wow. Okay, interesting. Next slide, please. So. What are we seeing here? So this is a side-by-side -side comparison of the current and what our device is going to be. Uh, it's a little easier to conceptualize than the um, models we have in the video. The video was made after the slideshow, and so right. um, it's, yeah. But as you can see, the form factor is significantly reduced um, as it's as wide as their feet stands. So. Can they actually, do they have to have a frame holding them? Yes, in they, this? Do. they do. They do. And okay. so that'll, that'll be the best style harness, which would be supported through a thing in the back. In the back. Through a coaster. Oh, the okay. Mm -hmm. I understand that. And mm -hmm. what, what, what's, uh, what else does the frame have in it? I mean, the, uh, the vest. Is it just a, a harness to keep them in there, or does it have sensors and things like that? Is so that initially, that? it'll be a harness. Um, yeah. in, in my expertise uh, of the engineering side, it's best for me to work on the frame. And so I'm working on constructing, the, making sure the frame is solid and won't tip over. And then as we advance in the project, you know, we have Jillian, who's a medical, her, her medical expertise, and we're looking to add physical therapy or therapists to the team oh, okay. to help with the walk, walking mechanics and making sure they're supported correctly. So Jillian, what kind of things can you do with the vest and all the system that provides that kind of, you know, physiotherapy? 
Um, honestly, that's what we're trying to kind of work through right now okay. um, as far as the vest goes, just because we want to make sure that what we're making is going to be, you know, beneficial and okay. work for each patient. Um, so we are looking to expand our research team mm -hmm. currently. So I'm not sure as of yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes. like, could you like put um, devices that stimulate the, um, the muscles in the leg, for example, and are triggered by a, an electric signal? Or a, so I've that heard they... of, of devices like that. Mm -hmm. Right now, um, it was actually interesting because I, I just saw something that went on the market and into rehab rehabilitation facilities, and it's kind of like these robotic legs that okay. are, you know, help people to walk. Yeah, an exoskeleton. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. an, yeah, an exoskeleton, and that was really interesting. Um, but I guess for our gait trainer, it would be more so for, you know, um, to get the motion in, yeah. um, and not so much to correct their gait okay. yet. Perhaps okay. future iterations of this device yeah. will include an exoskeleton. Yeah, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, next one, please. Okay. <laughs> This is what we're talking about, product expansion. Right, right yes. <laughs> so I could see uh, a great, uh, apart from old people like me, <laughs> getting there. With the, those are the guys in the walker, me and Jay. Um, uh, wounded warriors, for example, mm -hmm. are, are, uh, the Department of Defense should be very interested in this mm -hmm. kind of a technology. Mm -hmm. Have you mm -hmm. talked to anybody yet in DOD or in... That would uh, you know be interested in this? Not yet, because my current focus is on sterile palsy patients. Okay. But once we have this sort of figured out, then we'll look at possible expansions. Okay. Cool. Um, so uh, tell me about the timeline. Oh, first of all, you're trying to raise money on what? Crowdfunding. On crowd through crowdfunding through GoFundMe. And you're looking for how much? Approximately five thousand dollars. And how can people donate to your crowdfunding? So you can go to our website, g-trainerllc.com, okay. and in one of the tabs, they'll say contribute. And so you can either send us an email if you would like to help out, or you can go directly to, there's a link directly to the GoFundMe site. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so they have to raise all the money first before you get it, correct? And you have to meet some deliverables. Is that how it works? Mm. Crowdfunding? I believe it's just donations, donation-based, yeah. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand that you entered a contest at the university. Yes. So tell us about that. So I entered this concept through uh, Pace's Breakthrough Innovation Challenge, mm -hmm. where I gave, uh, this, this slideshow was my pitch, and so I gave it to a lot of um, professionals in the business side. Yeah. And ended up winning first place. That was nice. <laughs> Very good. And what was the prize? The prize was $2,000. Okay. And so with that money, we used it to pay for the LLC fees and the, um, other, the patent fees. And I bought a 3D printer, which is what I'm currently using to help prototype. Okay. I thought the UH had some 3D printers, but I guess maybe they're not big enough. They do. They do. And I am, I am using their resources. But for me personally, it helps to have a 3D printer at my house because I'm constantly around the clock 3D printing. You know, I'll be up to like 3 in the morning just working on this. I'll watch TV and print and, you know, and so that it really helps to have something in my own personal space. Hey, admire dedication. <laughs> so this is like a new Steve Jobs, right? Like you're, hopefully. You're hopefully. Working <laughs> out your garage. That's the goal. And you're going <laughs> to invent this new thing that's going mm -hmm. to take, their wor take mm -hmm. the world by storm. Uh, that's great. So, um, my other uh, questions are, is like, uh, what's been the response so far from the community? How long, how long have you been up on the, on the site for crowdfunding and what's been the response to date? So the site we actually just launched today and the video that, oh. is, the video okay. that is shown yeah. is something that we're planning to launch this week. Okay, cool. And so we just finished filming it last month and so we just are, this is something very new. Okay. But um, in terms of, I've been promoting a lot of this on my Instagram, you know, that's how people can keep tabs if you like to follow me. It's, at austin.yoshino and so you can i kind of like post my stories of what i'm doing a lot of you know like the 3d printing and updates on the project and so i've been getting a lot of good response people love the story of course but mm -hmm. i think they like my determination and my grind you know i'm constantly working on this is something that has become almost the first priority yeah. e equal to school of course but mm -hmm. and how's the university supported your efforts what what have they actually done to help you it, it's great um so i first started the research through a a mechanical engineering 696 course through Dr. Scott Miller and so I had a team that helped me kind of help define the problem and what what are parameters that need to be done that this gate training needs to fix 
And then from there, I took it through uh, Pace's business program. And Pace has been amazing. Uh, they're, I'm constantly getting emails. I actually got this interview through Pace, but I'm constantly yeah, getting emails right. about you know, these events I should tend to, a lot of networking events. I went to the East Meets West conference for free. That was really great. There was a lot of great speakers there and a lot of good insight that I kind of gained and a lot of business model. Because I'm not a business student. And so, but um, you know, they make it really easy to learn. You're, you're learn learning business through the school of hard it knocks. Is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that is true. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. the best school there is. <laughs> so what kind of training did Pace give you? I mean, just like top level stuff, just so the audience understands what, what a great resource that is. So through the Pace program, they gave me two business coaches. Um, and so they were, well, they helped me out in terms of making my slideshow and helping to define the market. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, just a bunch of resources they have this uh, space study room, which is, you know, phenomenal. They have really fast Wi-Fi, like really cool chairs, you know, very like up-to-date modern type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, you might want to consider Accelerate UH. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you said you applied for them, but you didn't quite make it this, yeah, this yeah. term. They were looking for a little more traction. And yeah. so the next time we apply, we're going to have a prototype ready. Right. And uh, along with the team. Because when I had applied, I, was, I applied by myself. And so I think right. that was one of the things that, sure. you know, was a little bit of a... Um, I actually uh, took their course. Oh, wow. with, uh, I, I support a friend of mine who, uh, and we got accepted. Oh, and wow. So I went to, uh, it's really a great course. So mm -hmm. I'm going to put in a plug for Accelerate UH. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I come, I came out of business. I'm not mm -hmm. an academic myself. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I was, I am still arrogant, but I thought <laughs> I knew everything I knew there was to know. And mm -hmm. I didn't and mm -hmm. don't. And mm -hmm. uh, excellent course. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well done. So your pitch was really well done. That's kind of the things they, they teach at Accelerate UH. Mm -hmm. Plus, they put you together with a venture capitalist, teach you how right. to raise money. Yes, yes. About uh, getting your patents in place mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. you protect your IP, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's really good. Mm -hmm. So what's next? So next, we are entering a business plan competition where it'll okay. be a little more on what we've done since the Innovation Challenge. Yeah. And. Um, it's going to be me, Jillian, and Everett Amundsen, who is the COO of the company. He's a double major in marketing and entrepreneurship. So he'll really help out in those. So we saw aspects. him on the movie, right? Yes, he was. Yeah, he yeah. was the other one in the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. are all dressed up in your shirts and ties. And yeah. <laughs> like, really let's, let's keep things yeah. professional. Huh? Yeah, very good. So they say in Hawaii, you only wear a jacket and tie when you're going to the court building. <laughs> so That's true. Absolutely not the case. In <laughs> So um, we're going to wrap up now. So mm -hmm. I'd just like to ask you, um, you know, do you have any partying things that I missed that you would like to the people and the audience out there to know about? Uh, let me ask Jillian, uh, Jillian first. <laughs> I can let you do much of the talking. So. Oh, no. Um, I just really hope people can support this innovation, this mm -hmm. idea, because I think that it could really potentially help a lot of people and, you know, from them medical side, I think it's going to be a great um, asset and very beneficial to the community. Awesome. Yeah. And the inventor and uh, <laughs> CEO and founder, what do you got to say? Um, I guess, wow, we've talked a lot. Um, if you'd like to help out, please uh, reach out to me. We are open to any suggestions, any resources. Right. Um, I guess just for me, this company is a little more than just a product. You know, it's, it's almost a double-edged sword where I can make something to help people, but also bring awareness. Cause, yeah. I mean, I grew up in a family where my little brother was cerebral palsy, and so I was always surrounded by it. But I'm starting to realize that well, that's not true for everyone. And so right. if I can help to bring awareness of the issue and you know, potentially help research or whatever it may be to make their lives better, I would love to do so. So uh, I'll wind it up. I think you have a real winner here. This is great technology. I'm Thank fascinated you. by it. So uh, we can talk later. Mm -hmm. um, everybody, I, that uh, wraps up our show for today. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back next week with another interesting uh, set of uh, uh, in, uh, interviewees. And um, so thank you very much. Guests. Thank I you meant. so much. Yes. Yeah. So thank, <laughs> thank you for having us. Thanks for coming along. Thank you so much. Jillian, thank you so much. Awesome, <laughs> awesome work. Very good.